going. Hoodwink has a 53% win rate in the first day of launching High Mar Pups. This literally means this hero is broken. Especially when you consider that it's been played in multiple positions, like 4, 3, 2, and 1. We obviously will drop a Hoodwink Guide as fast as possible, but overall, as a core, this hero is centered around proccing orb effects, especially Maelstrom and Mjolnir, after the increased proc buff. Because her Q scales with her actual damage, Daedalus and Rapier are oftentimes purchased on her since she is very hard to catch, on top of scaling so well into the late game. When you look at the old heroes, Lycan is the highest win rate increase according to Dota buff, and it makes total sense. While his buffs don't look that impressive on its own, the fact that Necronomicon got the Moonspeed Aura again, and most importantly, the new upgrade to Helm of the Dominator seems a good fit to the hero, since the damage buffs and pretty much everything about the Thunderhide got buffed and it's insane on Lycan. Puck also got a ton of new changes. The main one, in my opinion, is the turn rate improvement because this allows blinking out of phase shift way easier. After that, there is a ton of new stuff to talk about. From new items to neutral items, there seems to be a lot of new possibilities for Puck and other intelligence cores. That said, his shard is probably one of the main reasons this hero is good. The shard doesn't give you a free break on coil, even if you cast coil from max range, but it's very easy to break it if the enemy doesn't know how to position around it. And with the X buff, the coil damage buff, the hero seems to be in a pretty decent spot. The fact that you can reduce one in rift to a 6 second cooldown at level 20, and it also reveals wards and invis heroes with the shard, is great at that value. Nyx is quite a unique hero dispatch. While his buffs seem pretty mediocre, you have to remember that Vendetta damage is pure. Hitting Impale easier is always going to be a good thing for him, but once again, the shard seems to be an above average one. Not only your hero can jump from 450 move speed to 660 very easily, meaning this hero can gank and run away much better, the magic resistance debuff it applies is relevant. There is not a lot of data points just yet, but take this game as an example. Leo's team is quite behind, but once he gets his shard, the extra move speed allows him to carapace Pace Cliff and quickly run to her, forcing the BKB. Leo got unlucky because he didn't know about the BKB, gets ready as he uses the Usceptor, but this engagement turns the game totally around for Radiant, and they win. Nyx basically becomes a broodmother that doesn't need webs, and since you don't really need that many items in this hero, it makes him really strong, especially in a meta where Tinkers, Pucks, and a lot of other int core heroes that are mobile are buffed. Bounty Hunter got straight up buffs. Not only his move speed is higher, but the fact that the track cast range is the same of the move speed bonus makes this hero much better at chasing targets. His shard is kinda good, but I think it's better for support or offlane bounty. So far, most scary bounty hunters I've seen didn't care too much about it. That said, Orb of Corrosion seems to be core on him since it groups a lot of items this hero likes into a very good slot. It also means you can carry the Blightstone Minus Armor alongside Desolator since the orb does other things and with the track range, Shadow Walk's low and Orb of Corrosion's low buffs, this hero can chase people for days. Mason rushed a BKB in a game that felt super dire for his team and with the one fights that are easy since this hero just gets on top of people very easily now, he scaled to win against Lycan, the apparent king of the patch so far. Wraith King might be a surprising hero to you. After all, his crit is now set to a cooldown, which is a nerf, and they even removed his level 20 talent, which was, you know, what actually made Wraith King good. But what you have to remember is that the hero is still a great Radiance carry. In a meta where agility heroes are all stronger after Lash and Sven got nerfed, Radiance remains a really good way to handle illusions. And in this game, we can see the hack going for early blade mail. Now that attack speed isn't that great on this hero, since you can only crit every 4 seconds, Blade Mail allows Wraith King to farm fast, like a Spectre, deal with Ancients, and it gives high damage for his crits. Another awesome thing about Wraith King is that having the shard at minute 20 is many times better than the old talent. In this game, the Hawk was able to get Radiance and the shard at level 15, meaning that the window for PL or Anti-Mage or Naga to counter Wraith King is even shorter than normal. In his other game, we can see Nico Baby going for what I think is going to be the bread and butter of Wraith King when you're not facing minions or illusions. Armlet, Blink, and whatever else is needed. Juggernaut, huh? In a way, with a lot of mega hard carries being out of the meta, Jug can definitely shine a bit more than before. But what you probably wouldn't expect is that Radiant's Juggernaut might be one of the reasons this hero is doing so well. Don't get me wrong, Mask of Madness was barely nerfed, Battle Fury and Eggs are still just as good, but Battle Fury isn't a great way to deal with Phantom Lancer or Naga. Even if you go Eggs to have Swift Slash, the fact that heroes can just doppelganger and cancel most of their damage is annoying. And when you go right click damage against mana drain heroes, it's super easy for you to be drained easily, and then you're not gonna be able to ult, spin TP, and you will die. 
The Radiance Jug build, especially now that you get more AoE with Blade Fury and you get a 160 Blade Fury damage talent, allowed Mage to come back from a 20k gold deficit against a PL draft. Once this build comes online, the damage you can output is crazy high and it allows Jug to deal with late game PL beautifully. It definitely looks weird, but it carried this game very hard. He didn't even buy the shard here, but that is another interesting way to make sure you can burst people with every Blade Fury usage. Sand King. In my opinion, his shard is at best mediocre, but the win rate increase shows just how much his channel time was a weakness. Epicenter was incredibly easy to cancel and even to mess up yourself when you were trying to use it in teamfights. The way the spell works now guarantees that you're not gonna waste the spell unless your blink gets cancelled for whatever reason. I think it also helps that we are, at least apparently, walking towards an illusion hero meta and this bad boy has a ton of AoE. See what happened here? Because anti-mage ults, Sand King can cancel Epicenter and now he has it for another fight. In the last patch, that would be on cooldown for 90 seconds. Visage is really strong right now. The hero used to be great at grouping up and taking objectives, but bad in the laning stage, bad at doing anything else but grouping, but they improved one of the worst parts of the hero, the terrible attack projectile. Then, on top of that, they buffed the familiar damage, whilst at the same time, they gave Visage a way to be one of the scariest gankers in the game. Not only your Broodmother every minute, but you get a 30% bonus damage increase for 4 seconds, so you don't need minus armor. This is one of the main reasons people are going for Set of Vice now. You don't really want to drop your birds because they are really strong and you get damage bonus, so Scythe gives you the control to burst whoever he wants since you're casting the spell from invisibility and from like high grounds. Koikva has 100% win rate with Visage at the moment, and I can see why. This is incredibly strong. Phantom Lancer. Another hero that wasn't S tier in the last patch, and suddenly it feels like it's at the top because some heroes got nerfed. That said, there is one aspect of Phantom Lancer that got buffed heavily, and it's his agonims. There are tons of uses for this. You can roast really fast, because the illusions last for a long time. You can recreate all of your illusions after something like a Meteor from Invoker destroys all of them. You can use it to burst specific heroes at the start of a fight, all for 75 mana, and obviously you get a ton of great stats from eggs that PL loves. There's also items like Mage Slayer that feels like great assets on Aji heroes that need to deal with magic damage but scale with agility at the same time for a great price. So I can see why Phantom Lancer is doing so well, and I think you should probably play this hero. Guys, thank you so much for watching, commenting, and subscribing.